already ready, so we can announce it. It's uh, Clodomiro Cafolla from Durham University. And this talk is uh, uh, dissipation and lubrication of solid liquid nano interfaces, complex balance of substrate topography, molecular diffusion, and environmental conditions. So it's a long title, yeah? <laughs> yeah, it, yeah, it is. <laughs> so the floor well, is yours. Yeah, yes. thanks. <laughs> so first of all, thank you very much to the organizers for the invitation. It's a real great pleasure and honor to be here. And uh, as the title and so was suggesting, and, uh, and above all, as we have seen over the last couple of days, uh, lubrication dissipation are really complex problems. So today I would uh, really like uh, to focus on the importance of molecular ordering on lubrication, and in particular how uh, the effects in the fluids in the surface and microphase separation impact the molecular ordering and hence lubrication. And finally, a very, very quick uh, look at a potential uh, smart uh, pathway to control ordering and lubrication. So before actually going to the core of the presentation, a little bit about myself. I'm a postdoc at Durham University. Uh, my main research interests are in the area of uh, uh, nanoscale interfaces, particularly solid liquid interfaces and uh, transition metal oxide interfaces and also some interest in developing new technique and biomedical studies. So going uh, uh, to solid liquid interfaces and lubricated friction, we all know the crucial importance of uh, lubrication in a wide range of systems, our joints, engines, uh, electromechanical systems. And we also know that this is a very complex problem. So for example, if we zoom in in one of these uh, contacts, um, and we consider just one molecule, looking at a perfectly flat surface, uh, then we can relatively well understand the system. Uh, the problems arise when we go actually to the real case scenario, uh, when the surface is not perfect, there may be contaminants uh, in the fluid, and so we have to worry about solid liquid interactions, uh, liquid liquid, potential jamming, geometrical effects. And so to tackle this problem, I used a combined approach, uh, mainly experimental, based on imaging uh, the uh, liquid lubricant solid surface with uh, atomic resolution. And this is combined uh, um, with uh, nanorheology, with highly localized shear measurements. And where possible, uh, I did also some molecular dynamic simulations, so as to get a better insight into the dynamical evolution of the lubricant molecules. Uh, looking at the details of the experimental techniques, they are both based on atomic force uh, microscopy, AFM, Imaging is done in amplitude modulation. Um, so we oscillate the cantilever with a constant oscillation, sort of probing the interface like the stick of a blind person would do, basically. And uh, this is complemented with um, using the AFM also as a nanoscopic clear shear rheometer. So what I do in this case is that I laterally oscillate the sample and I record the inducer torsion of the tip. And the magnitude of this torsion gives us information about the magnitude of the lubricated friction force. And the phase lag between this torsion and the oscillation of the sample gives us information about the viscoelastic properties of the sample. With a phase of zero for a perfectly elastic coupling, conservative system, and a phase of 90 for a perfectly dissipative or viscous coupling. So let's see how we can uh, use this combined approach to study the ordering of the uh, lubricant uh, um, molecules. And the first case study is uh, based on aqueous solutions confined between the AFM tip and, the, uh, and mica. Yeah, we have a pictorial representation of the lattice. And if we have just pure water due to the nano confinement, epitaxial effects, the water molecules uh, get well ordered in a nice ice like uh, structure. But as soon as we introduce point defects in our fluids, in this case ions, because of the electrostatic interactions, they tend to disrupt the hydrogen bond network of the water molecules. And what we observe is different absorption profiles depending on the charge density of, of the ions. And they have a huge uh, impact on the dynamic response of the system. So it's very clear the response of the system just in pure water um, and when we add ions. So when we add ions, the system is more disordered is less able to resist when applied the load. We see the decrease in the shear force, and we see that the shear phase suggests a much more liquid-like behavior. 
Still, the linearity of the friction force with respect to the applied load allows us to extract an effective friction coefficient mu, which we can model as a function of the charge density of the ion's row, and an empirical parameter, a lambda, which captures the thermally activated motion of the ions. They need to overcome an activation barrier per unit charge, EA over Q, with the thermal fluctuation over the mega lattice favoring the jumps of the ions between adjacent sides. And uh, both Pietro and Nicola gave uh, really nice talks about Pran Tomlinson model. So to a certain extent, this is an adapted version of the model. The FM tip provides energy to the ions and they need to overcome an energy barrier represented by the interactions with the surrounding fluid molecules and with the surface. So take home message from this first case study is that point defects in the fluid, they disrupt the order and hence reduce the friction force. Uh, let's look at another type of defects, in this case uh, defects um, in the surface. And in this case, we look at a system that is quite relevant for industrial application since our fluid molecules are made of squalene, commonly found in lubricants, and the surface is graphite. And we know that carbon-based surfaces are quite common in contacting uh, parts. And the type of surface defect that I'll consider um, were step edges. So here we have a classical step edge. And if we are cold enough, um, what we see is that the molecules uh, tend to self-assembly in sort of lamella structure, very similar to what Roland was saying on Monday. Um, this is very clear, in particular, if we take the derivative of the topographical image, uh, something that we call the amplitude channel. It's very, uh, very sensitive, uh, emphasizes the local variation. And we see that when we heat up the system, then the order progressively vanishes, except in a region in close proximity of the step edge. And then we, when we further ramp up the temperature, then the order progressively vanishes. And finding this order at the top and the bottom of the step edge is a bit counterintuitive. If you think that the order persists in particular close proximity of the step edge, so you would expect actually the geometrical singularity to disrupt the order, not to promote it. Uh, molecular dynamic simulations run both at the top and the bottom of the step edge seem to suggest that there is a loss of mobility in proximity of this surface defect. So this is why there is an increase in order. So this is a completely different scenario from the case when the ions were actually disrupting the order. So what happens here is that, is that in proximity of the step edge, the molecules have less configurations to stably absorb, and so there is a reduction in entropy. And this, of course, comes with a cost. So if we take our um, nanorheological measurements in close proximity of the step edge, we see that the friction force is much higher and the system behaves much more like a solid-like way. The molecules are stuck. So being really the relaxation dynamics of the lubricant molecules dictating the uh, lubricated friction force response, uh, what we can do is to examine the evolution of the system when we change the shear velocity and the temperature. And what we find is that increasing the shear velocity, the molecules have less time to explore available configurations. So they are stuck in their position and explore a greater friction force. Something very similar that happens uh, when we decrease the temperature. And actually, um, I use all these data taken on different shear velocity and temperature to develop a quantitative model to describe uh, the dynamical response of the shear lubricant. And overall, the response of uh, the shear force curves is, is this. So we have an initial ramp up corresponding to an effective yield stress, and then a plateau-like region. The yield stress presenting a number of irregular features. I actually focused on the linear region for the fitting. And in this linear model, the intercept corresponds uh, to a yield stress and the gradient to an effective dynamical friction coefficient. And uh, what I found is that it's really the yield stress that depends uh, on the velocity and the temperature. When it comes to the velocity, the dependence is a power law with um, an exponent that is classical for a system where the thermal fluctuation are lower than the activation energy, but still able to promote some molecular motion. And uh, what is really interesting is that in this thermally activated motion, the activation energy EA is basically just four times smaller than the latent heat of vaporization of squalene in the bulk. So at the interface, of course, the molecules have fewer neighbors, 
But still, this EA is very much the energy needed to uh, break the intermolecular bonds and get a molecule free from the cage of his neighbor. So it's a penalty cost that we have to pay, but once we have paid that, we are on a free ride, and so the friction coefficient does no longer depend on velocity and temperature. And uh, take on messages from the second scenario is completely different from the point defects in the fluid. Surface defects here actually promote order, and they also provide us with a complementary framework to better understand the usual roughness increase of friction that we often um, experience in contacting parts. So, so far, what I have been examining are relatively ideal case scenarios, but as, uh, as Rob was, uh, was mentioning on Monday, often we have in our system an amount of, of undesired particles, not just point-like defects. And for example, water molecules, they are undesired in many car engines applications. So what I have here is uh, an hydrophilic aluminosilicate, mica, very common in engines, not mica, but uh, aluminosilicate. And, uh, and um, on mica, what you have in ambient conditions is that there is a nanoscopic uh, thin film of water absorbed on it. And then I used uh, exadegan as a model lubricant. And uh, what we see if we track the um, evolution of the interface with, uh, with, with temperature is that uh, when we ramp up the temperature, the water nucleates forming these water nanodroplets. They increase in size and number with temperature and they coalesce when we cool down the system. And these uh, nanodroplets have a huge impact on the friction force. So if we compare the friction force on one of these nanodroplets and on an homogeneous area of the interface, well, there is a twofold increase in the friction force. So this is very much related to a penalty cost that we have to pay because what we are trying to do on the water nanodroplet is that we are trying to mix two separated phase, phases. And of course, this anomalous temperature behavior uh, can be well rationalized because here the temperature effectively shifts the probability of water nanodroplets nucleating. So the higher the probability, of course, the greater the number of water nanodroplets that you find on your surface, and the hence uh, the greater the friction that we experience. But we can shift the equilibrium of the system also playing with the water content of the system. So we can sort of dry out the atmosphere, decreasing the probability of the water na uh, nanodroplets to nucleate even at a high temperature and get a relatively low friction force at all the temperatures. Or we can actually saturate the atmosphere with water. We increase the probability of water nanodroplets to nucleate and we increase the friction force. And what we, what we have seen experimentally can be rationalized with a simple thermodynamic model with uh, Water and hexadegan, of course, we know they don't like each other, but they have a similar work of adhesion when it comes to the mica surface. So they compete against each other for the, for the substrate, and uh, once the water nanodroplets um, get the size that we have seen experimentally, then they are thermodynamically favored in the spherical shape as they also minimize the interactions with, uh, with hexadegan. So this is very much a liquid-liquid problem. So what we can do is that we can add a surfactant model. Now, if I work in the UK, I'm still very much Italian, so I use oleic acid, main component of olive oil. And, um, and basically what we do is that with this surfactant mo molecule, we reduce the interfacial energy between hexadecan and water. So we decrease the probability of the water nanodroplets to nucleate and we decrease, hence, the friction force at any temperature. So take on messages uh, from these uh, three case studies is that uh, the ordering of the lubricant uh, plays a very important role in lubrication, and we have seen uh, two different uh, types of response when it comes to very localized defects. So defects in the fluid ions, they disrupt the long-range order of, um, of the water molecules and reduce the friction force. Whereas in the case of surface defects, they result in a reduction in entropy and thence increase in the friction force. 
And finally, we have seen how the microphase separation affects also lubrication, and an effective way to help with this is to use uh, a surfactant molecule. So what is really cool to me is, uh, is this controlling of uh, uh, the lubricant ordering. And we have seen that temperature and humidity can do that, but probably they are not the tools that we would like to use. So something that I have uh, started recently doing is to investigate how um, we can control the order of the lubricant using, for example, magnetic field. And so here I've used, uh, uh, these are preliminary experiments where I used uh, a magnetic ionic liquid. Uh, here there is a steel interface with some iron oxide particles deposited on it. And uh, when the magnetic field is off, well, the magnetic, um, um, and we, we see that there is basically no magnetic signal. The friction force is pretty much homogeneous with uh, the magnetic ionic liquid helping also with the roughness of the iron particles. But as we switch on the field, well, in this case, um, this uh, um, uh, ionic, do uh, ionic liquid tends to form these um, uh, domains, microphysis separation, Nicola published a paper a few years ago about uh, this ionic liquid, not this one, but generally speaking that they can give rise to microphase separation, and hence we have again an increase in the friction force because probably what is happening here is very similar to the hexadecan water case, is when we try to mix two differently separated phases. Uh, this is preliminary stuff. Hopefully, maybe if there will be again this conference next year or within two years, I'll be able to show you more data on this. Uh, I would like just to finish off uh, uh, highlighting this conference in Durham that I'm organizing. Um, so thank you very much already to a number of invited speakers uh, who have uh, confirmed uh, their presence. So um, I hope I'll see you many of you there. If you'd like to come, just drop me an email. And uh, thank you very much again for your attention. Nice talk, and yeah, there's already a question from Rob. Thank you very much. Very, very nice work. I'm wondering about um, for the uh, the it was squalane on the the graphite was the surface. What was the tip material? The tip material was made of uh, the tip material was made of uh, DLC diamond-like carbon. Okay, so you would expect some interactions significant ones, I think, between those molecules and the tip too. And so I'm wondering if you've thought about, I think this is a hard question to answer without simulations, but could there be some, you know, organization and influence of the tip, uh, organization of molecules interacting with the tip? And the reason I'm asking is, there is the shearing, I'm wondering if the shearing is between the tip and the molecule, or is the shearing you're measuring between molecule adhered to tip and molecule adhered to surface, both of which are interesting? Yeah. So definitely that is a very much uh, a possibility. Uh, what, I'm, what, I've, what I'm trying to do is uh, to replicate also those experiments using, uh, using different tips. But at the moment, I don't have any definite uh, results. But it's a very nice uh, idea, and thanks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, basically, I don't have a definite answer because <laughs> I don't have uh, yet uh, the complete data set for, for that. And above all, as Rob, as you were suggesting, there will be the need also for some molecular dynamic simulations, and I have some limited experience with that. Um, I was curious about the nano droplet experiments that you showed because uh, one imagines that if the contact angle of the nano droplet is sufficiently low, they actually should act as an additional lubricant, so as if you had a liquid infused surface. So I was wondering whether you can tune uh, the contact angle of such droplets, because in the end, uh, they, not always they should act as defects, but on the other hand, they, they could uh, be. Yeah, so um, we, in um, the experiments that, that I run, I couldn't control the, the angle the nano droplets were at. Also remember that um, when we run our experiments, they are run completely with the tip immersed in the fluid. So basically, imagine that there is this huge drop of hexadecan, which is the dominant liquid, because uh, we were talking about 200 microliters of hexadecan with the tip completely immersed. And then this nanoscopic thin film is like two nanometers. 
And, uh, and so what you are doing is that basically you go on, this is what I have in my mind, is that you go on one of these uh, droplets and that doesn't just act as a pinning point, but there is also, you are trying basically to remix the water with the exadegan while you shear it. So uh, definitely anyway, the point of, of contact angle is a good one. Try to do some, some other experiment at uh, the macro scale uh, for, for the paper. Um, that was more related to work out the work of addition. But yeah, controlling uh, the contact angle is definitely something, something to explore. Thanks. We have to proceed, so thank you, thank you. again for a nice talk. And, uh,